What's up guys, Dirty Reefer here. Um, I did actually get the Waterbox 180 in. We set it up and it's absolutely marvelous. It's gorgeous. I can just sit there and just stare in an empty tank. Uh, I actually deleted the intro footage, so I'm gonna voice over for the intro, but uh, I'm just gonna kind of doc document the uh, initial like day zero setup and get into why I wasn't really able to record the um, construction and setting up the tank. Uh, but in any case, enjoy guys. Alrighty guys, so this is the setup. This is what we're rocking with. Slapped on the orange filter. Um, I'm not really sure if I can tell the difference, honestly. I did pick up some cool little filters for the iPhone just for a while, uh, while I'm waiting on getting a camera. This is the 180 water box. Um, I'm, I'm super stoked about it. You can kind of, so something I talked about, I, I think in the, in the last video was that the, uh, the aquascape, I want to do something a little bit different. And I went with a really like swoopy, archy, kind of open concept. You know, and of course, I, I probably will end up changing this up a little bit. Uh, this is pretty much a first iteration as, as any, but uh, yeah, I, you know, I wanted to go with a ton of arches, uh, you know, overhangs, places to put, you know, SPS coral up here. But I really wanted to focus on, you know, mid to lower rock placement for, you know, the LPS and softies. I mean, as you can kind of see in this tank over here, I mean, the vast majority of it is LPS. The vast majority of it is LPS. And obviously, you can't even see it right here. Like, it's just past, you know, where this frog spawn is right here. It's just, there's too much light and too much flow for LPS to really thrive. So I, I really didn't want to, I, I really didn't want to, you know, make the same mistake on this one. I also wanted it to be a lot more open. So really at all times you can always see where all your fish are at and stuff like that. Um, but I also, you know, made sure to give them the archways and, you know, there's, there's little spots for, you know, where they can sleep in and, you know, little spots for them to claim as their territory and stuff. That's, that's something I was, you know, I really wanted to design in a really open aquascape, but at the same time, make sure I give them the room that they need and stuff like that. This aquascape, I, I really do love it. I, I do see myself changing it in the near future. There's some pieces in here that I'm just not sure about. Um, but this whole like archway right here, I, I absolutely adore it. I absolutely love this. Um, it's, it's crazy. You can actually, at least in the camera on my side, what I'm seeing, you can actually see more than I can because it's so cloudy right now. But I did just fill this this guy up. I you know I probably started the the pump like less than less than an hour ago. This this tank is so crazy wide. It's it's a uh, 25 inches wide versus this one. I want to say is like 16 or 18 or something like that. Now I thought this one was wide. I thought this one was wide back when I had it. But then I mean over here it's just ridiculous. It's just massive. This tank I absolutely love it. Um, I went with the Radeon. Radeon XR15s. Uh, I need to get that little, well, I might need to get that sheet. I don't know, that little diffuser sheet. Uh, I went with the Radeon XR15s. I do plan on getting a third one, kind of hanging it from the back of the overflow. For now, you know, during the cycle, you want to, you don't want to have too much light because the, the light prevents bacteria growth. And, you know, obviously the point in a cycle is um, allowing your bacteria, your nitrifying bacteria, to build up to a point where they can, you know, process ammonia into nitrite and then nitrate, um, and then, you know, possibly from nitrate into nitrogen gas. You know, I'm running these lights at like probably 10% right now. And, you know, just because I do have some corals in there, there's a toadstool back there, some pallies, and on, on that rock is at least one encrusting fovea. I don't know what the other fovea back there is. Or I don't know what the other coral is, the other encrusting coral. I think I want to say it's another fabia. It's also rock flower down here, and then there's some. Uh, it's so cloudy, you can kind of see the plugs right there. You can see the uh, kind of make out the outline of the zoas. But yeah, I'm running the lights right now. That was you know why I decided to pick up the uh, the lights when I did because I do have you know livestock in here, corals in here already, as well as you know. Alrighty, guys. So this is the sump. This is. Pretty rough draft. I could actually take the orange filter off. But yeah, so I mean, basically, it comes down through those two pipes right there with the uh, the gate valve, and it, it heads into these two uh, filter socks. They give you one. Well, they state that they're going to give you two mesh. I believe. I'm pretty sure that's what it says on their website. Um, but they give you one felt and one mesh. I don't like felt filter socks at all. They clog up super easy. 
especially now with how dusty and nasty the tank is, this thing's gonna clog up before the end of the night. Um, I, I much prefer mesh because they are super easy to wash out and stuff like that. Um, but in any case, I, I did take out the filter socks and put some uh, already from that sump down there, some cycled bio balls and you know biological filtration stuff. Most of that is dry rock, but it's in the refugium. Um, I'm not gonna put macroalgae in there just yet. I want to make sure that I give you know the if there is gonna be a ma major cycle, I want to give it time to kind of you know let it do its thing instead of messing with it. So. We have some uh, some dry rock down there. This is where the skimmer and the reactor are gonna go. Uh, at least down here, that skimmer and that reactor, the NIOS reactor. Uh, I haven't put them in just yet because I want to make sure that um, you know I don't want to remove anything from the water just yet. I don't want to mess with the cycle. Um, you know that's it, it'd be great to just toss a ton of. They give you this pretty cool. Um, pre-cut sponge which you know is kind of a lifesaver and there I do have sponges but they are not pre-cut they're not really even cut to fit the tank at all so you know it's it, that was always an annoyance but this one it's really cool sorry and then in here we're just running a basic simplicity pump I don't know how big of a brand simplicity is if anybody's familiar with it but uh, that's what we're running in there and then I'll show you guys we are gonna end up doing stuff with the manifolds. I, I'm not positive if I wanna run a UV sterilizer off the manifold or if I wanna just run it from the uh, return pump. But we can always run like a calc reactor, calcium reactor, something with those manifolds. And I do intend on doing something with those. And then I did mount the, uh, the pump controller, although not well, but I'm still proud of it. We're rocking the uh, Grow Refugium light right here. I do plan on getting an, a Neptune, or sorry, an Apex system. Um, something I'm really excited about doing. But yeah, I mean, that's kind of it. Uh, it's not, you know, not a whole lot going on in the tank. I guess I can talk about why the heaters are in here. Um, so the sump wasn't ready. It didn't have water in it. I, I wanted to make sure that the sump filled up naturally from the overflow, so that way I can make sure there were no leaks, you know, that it was able to run water um, to and from the sump uh, without any leakage. So I did this, or I just let the overflow naturally drain water into the sump and just kept filling up the, uh, the display tank. So uh, because there was no water in the sump, I had to have the heaters in the, in the display tank. I do plan on moving these. Yeah, guys, I mean, I'm super excited about this system. I, I, I really do think it has so much potential. You know, once I get that third light on there, once the water clears up, then I, I just think it's gonna look so good. Um, I'm, I'm really excited about about this whole adventure. And I'm, I'm glad to have you guys here with me. I think it's gonna be fun documenting um, everything. And, you know, as we kind of say goodbye to the old, say goodbye to the old system, hopefully, you know, someone who buys this soon, so I'm not poor forever. Uh, but as we say goodbye to the old system, you know, move the corals in here, I already kind of have an idea of where I want to put everything, and I think it's going to look just absolutely gorgeous. I, I do kind of feel bad for not recording, like, the unboxing and, you know, taking delivery of the water box system um, or even the construction. But basically, you know, what happened was I initially had three people to come help me. One of them flaked beforehand. Um, and then one of them was sitting here waiting around for the truck to show up. It was actually in my city for a couple couple days before delivery. They got here pretty early, but the, on delivery day, they actually came pretty late. Uh, the delivery window was uh, 12 to two and they got here at 2.10, so. So obviously since I had to do, you know, a bulk of the work, um, I wasn't able to record. I wasn't able to find anybody to help record. Obviously, you know, if I found someone, they probably would have been on lifting duty. And I do apologize for that. You know, I know, you know, for me, I was looking up, uh, you know, as much as I could about the Waterbox 180. So if you're, if you're also thinking about getting the Waterbox 180 and you're not sure about the construction parts, you know, if you're not sure about the, uh, you know, the looks and stuff like that, how, you know, how delivery looks, feel free to reach out. You know, I'm, I'm you know, the title of this video is gonna include Waterbox 180. So odds are, you know, some of the viewers might be P 
people who are just looking up water box 180 and aren't you know associated with this channel in any way um but i really did just kind of want to you know let you guys know i i, I do apologize you know I, that is something i really wanted to document but it just you know with everything happening and the time frames and stuff like that it just didn't work out but yeah i mean that's gonna do it for for now obviously well not obviously my plan is to do one weekly video on you know just throughout the week anything i do with the tank you know if i end up cleaning it or anything and something significant happens or you know any new acquisitions anything you know obviously updates throughout the cycle just basic basically recapping the week of the tank if any i haven't picked a day for it i want to say it's going to be monday but i also want to do one video a week that's not based on this tank specifically you know random content on a week-to-week -week basis, you know, two uploads a week. That's kind of what I'm thinking. Um, if you guys have comments, if you guys have any thoughts about my uh, my plans, if you have any requests or anything at all, just feel free to leave it in the comment section. Um, otherwise, you know, I, I hope you guys enjoy it. Obviously, you know, I recorded this one in landscape this time instead of portrait. Uh, my camera ship, camera, camera man ship is getting a little bit better, I think. Um, but yeah, I really do appreciate you guys tuning in.